WPRI 12. This is The Road Show. And good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Road Show. Yes, it's another great day, but not there at Slater Mill in Pawtucket. Just a great place with the waterfalls in the background and everything else. It's one of the places I know when I was a kid. Look, you grew up in you grew up uh, here in Rhode Island, yeah. too, Audrey. So, but when I was a kid, I remember going. Uh, my mother would put me in the little stroller, yeah. and we'd be out there. And they used to have it. I don't know if they still do, because it's been a while mm -hmm. since I've been in Slater Mill, but they used to have a great gift shop. <laughs> oh, right there? <laughs> yeah, oh. The Slater Mill, yeah, they really did. And my mother would get me, like, all of the little, you know, like the little tchotchke things that, you yeah. know, you go to a place like that and you get, and some of the stuff I, I still have. But every time I, I drive that. by there or any time I see Slater Mill, that's what I think of all the time. Well, too. you spoke my language, gift shop. Yes. That's, I, the, that's usually the buzzword <laughs> that gets my husband very nervous. Is a gift shop? Yes. Let's bypass right you're by in. it. You're in. What is your, uh, do you, like, when you do go to, like, some people, when they travel a lot, yeah. they'll collect, like, different, you know, little Things yeah, something. There. Are you into that, or is it just like you see something you're like I, I got to have that? That's my toxic trait. That's I see that, and you especially have it. if someone tells me there's not many left. Right. That's like the worst thing you can tell me. Yeah, but yeah. my best friend is exactly like that. My friend Vera, we've traveled the country together, and everywhere we've gone, she'll get like an ornament. Sure. It's around the holiday time. Right. She'll get something, a magnet, a coaster. Right. Um, I'm not like that, but I do like to. Um, if something's in you know short supply, yeah, I'm all over. Then it. you're all over. It yeah. could be anything. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, I know. I, look, I like a good gift. Like, if I go someplace and I see something, and you know, you go on vacation and you go different places yeah. and you see things and you're like, oh, I'm going to have that. But do I really yeah, need that? Yeah, you travel a lot. Do, I you, do. do you get a lot of things when you go away? Or does um, Anne Marie? My, my wife she will usually buy like uh, Christmas ornaments okay. from like, you know, if we go to, uh, if we're in another country or something yeah. like that, you know, she'll get a Christmas that's it's a memory. And that's, and that's a good thing. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Cracker Barrel also has a good Oh, a good I love gift. their <laughs> gift shop. That's a great gift shop. I could be lost for hours. <laughs> they do. They oh, do. I love it. All right. We, we should do the gift shop tour. We okay, have to do a that's live, what we're gonna, that's live what we're gonna uh, do. tour. All right, now the Tony Award winning musical Jagged Little Pill based on the critically acclaimed um, 90s album by Alanis Morissette is on stage at PPAC this week. And I'm excited. The show was set to debut last night, but did not go on as planned. Partway through the first act, the show was stopped due to a technical problem with the set's automation and eventually canceled. That's right. Now, ticket holders, don't worry, who would like to attend another performance should call the box office as soon as possible. Those who do not contact the box office by this Friday will be automatically refunded. Look. It's live show business, kids. Right, what are you going to do, Things happen, right? right? Things happen at the last minute. You right. can't plan for, plan for some things. But not to worry. If you did go to the show, you can either get your money back or they're going to work with you to make sure that you get to go to see a, another show. And I well. love that they're doing that. Yes, I mean, that's great. That's right, you that's know, right. Very important. All right, now we're going to toss it over to our own Jagged Little Pill, <laughs> Brendan Kirk. Well, I'm looking forward to the spinoff, Jagged Little Will. Ah, I've been using that on. for months <laughs> now. Come on, it's a good one. <laughs> Ashley upstairs said, didn't you come up with that back when they announced <laughs> to the show? I did. I've had yeah. it for months. I'm and, just waiting. And, and she's using that, too. I know, but she's crediting me. That's yes, fine. Okay. All right. That's fine. Uh, good morning. Good morning, friends. Good morning, Great yeah. to see you guys. Well, here now is a fun fact for the two of you and for everyone out there. How about this? We learned that it was this month in January of 1973 that construction was finally completed on the Providence Civic Center. Wow. Yes, they, oh, okay. and they first opened their doors with their huge grand opening. Five decades of memories and the 50th anniversary celebration continues throughout the year. Guys, do you remember maybe your first event over there? I do. I Will? Do. I do remember. Yeah. Uh, I remember one of the, the first times I was there was right after the blizzard blizzard of 78. They had almost like a, an anniversary party and they brought in the Beach Boys for it. No way. And covered the whole f first, you know, the whole bottom part with, yeah. with, uh, with beach sand. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. And, and it was in the dead of winter when they had it, too. <laughs> oh, and everybody oh, dressed up, too. It was bone chilling cold. How about for you, Audrey? You know, besides seeing a bunch of um, the ice capades, remember yes, that's what it was called? Sure, sure. I yes. think my parents would take us every year, but I saw meatloaf. It was my first Paradise by the there. Dashboard Lights. How yes, about my that? my parents yeah. took me, and yeah, I have great memories. I've seen a bunch of concerts there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, and yeah. I have many fond memories of going there. I'm still going there to, for so many great events. So, Audrey, Will, on that note, let me ask you some questions All about right. the arena that we now call the AMP, home to my beloved PC Friars, sure. and of course the Providence Bruins, and so many legendary events. Now, these are via the AMP's website. Are you ready? Ready. Okay, yes. now I put these together. Let's see how you do. Okay. What year did Elvis Presley, the one and only, perform 
perform his final show at the arena? Was it A, 1974, B, 1977, C, 1980? It is, uh, it is 77. Absolutely, yeah, and right. I think that was one of his last his last concerts. Yeah, they were saying was that. Right yes, there? yeah. Wow. Yep. Some historical value right there. Now, moving on, what comedian has performed the most times at the amp? Is it A, Jeff Dunham, B, Jerry Seinfeld, C, George Carlin? And that is, uh, Ooh, that is, I'm going to go with Jeff Dunham. Jeff Dunham is correct. Yeah, I thought maybe it was Carlin. I'm old. Now, his <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it. Were you alive? I'm in older. 1973. I'm okay. older. Well, his, he's performed there seven times, and that includes his upcoming performance in February, which is very cool. And lastly here, in 1978, Barry Manilow was presented a key to the city of Providence by Governor jo John Joseph Garrahee. B, Mayor Vincent A. Buddy Cianci. C, Will Gilbert. Well, <laughs> should we go with C? Are you there? <laughs> well, you're already starting on me, huh? <laughs> it's, uh, uh, Who is it? It's, it's Buddy. Buddy it was funny it's funny. I was born in 78 and I was trying to go back. I just totally aged myself. And but. another fun fact about yeah. that, the song Copacabana <laughs> yeah. was originally, the first time it was performed was at the Civic Center. Look at this. No way. Yes. He's, oh, a lot of yeah. trivia. He told like, that. We, he's Wikipedia, he Audrey. He literally did. Oh my God. And lastly, guys, true or false, the highlight of my childhood was attending the 1994 <laughs> WWE Royal Rumble at the then Providence Civic Center. That's absolutely true. I can't I believe it. I, it's I really. It. I was 12 years old. It was a tie. Lex Luger and Bret Hart both won. My <laughs> my my fi remembers? my fellow wrestling fans out there know this. Just a great great event. And so so was Love that the, was that what got you hooked? No, I was hooked long before that. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> but we don't have time. But yesterday, guys, as you know, our friends at the Amp sent over a commemorative cake, yeah. and we made a little video for them. So 50 years ago, the Providence Civic Center opened. It's now known as the AMP. They know we have a sweet tooth and they sent a delicious cake over. They sure do. 50 years, so many memories there, but there's a piece missing. Ooh. Yeah. I'm not waiting for the hundredth. Go fire. There you go. We love a good cake, and it is my life's goal to get Metallica to perform one more time in Providence at the Amp. I'm going to do my best to make that happen. I'm talking to you, Lars. And throughout the decades, as we all know, in those multiple name changes, we what we now know as the Amp has become one of New England's premier arenas. Steve in uh, Metrograno takes a look back. Whether it was a concert, a sporting event, or even the circus, many people have a memorable connection to this venue. It's great memories. That's what it's all about. The building, now the Amica Mutual Pavilion, also known as the AMP, held its grand opening on this day back in 1973. And even though there have been name changes along the way, Larry Lepore, the GM of the AMP, says it's more than just the name. Just the fact that uh, a lot of Rhode Islanders have grown up with the building. Whether it was, you know, 50 years ago calling it the Civic Center, then the Dunk, and now the Amp. We dug into our archives and found this old footage of what was then called the Civic Center. The venue in its time has held thousands of events, including artists such as Aerosmith, Kiss, Frank Sinatra, and Metallica. More recently, the AMP has been most notably home to the Providence College Friars, with NCAA tournament games having been played in the arena. In fact, the NCAA's Big East tournament was formed in this building back in 1979. And to celebrate the milestone, the venue will launch its AMP Gives 50 campaign, which will show support to the surrounding community later this month. We're going to try to reach out and create some positivity of having 50 years of this building get back into the community and see what we can do to help uh, the uh, downtown area. Outstanding. I love that arena. I've always enjoyed going in there and I can't wait for the next 50 years. Congrats to our friends over at the AMP. You can find out more about how the AMP plans to give back to the community on our website. Great stuff. Now let's check in with Mr. Gilbert who's made his way into the Roadshow Kitchen with one of our favorites. Actually, he's probably the favorite, but who's really ranking? Nick Raybar.